Once we have cut those walls down, once we've reduced the barriers, once we've lowered the cost of living and doing business in Maine, then we need to rebuild the economy of the state and we've got to start, and it all starts with education. We have disinvested in tertiary education, that is post-secondary education, colleges and universities. We've disinvested in Maine for four decades. And over that course of time, we've created two systems that don't talk to each other and that aren't being run in the way that a state like this needs to have them run. In our P through 12 system in Maine, 75% of our teachers aren't teaching after the first five years. 85% of our teachers aren't teaching after the first 10 years. We're 43rd in the country in starting salaries and 44th in overall salaries. Enrollments in P through 12 education in Maine are plunging and our costs are skyrocketing. Something, something is awry. We have in Maine today, thanks to the relationship in my view between leadership of the Democratic Party and the Maine Teachers Union, we have a closed system, locked up tight, resistant to reform, resistant to innovation, resistant to pay for performance, resistant to charter schools, resistant to longer school years, resistant to longer school days. And so what's happened? We're third in northern New England behind New Hampshire and Vermont in performance in grades three through eight in both reading and math. Just measures. Our graduation rates from high school are way below what they ought to be. The problem in Maine with our education system isn't consolidation. The problem in Maine is quality, equity, and cost-effective performance, and we need to fix it or we're not going to have a workforce that will attract an employer who somehow gets to look over the wall of costs and over the wall of no. We've got to change this. In November, you're going to have to ask yourselves, who has the best strategy to fix a broken state, to make it work here? You're going to have to ask yourselves, who has the independence to stand up to vested interests in political parties? And who has the experience and the skills from government, politics, business, to make the state work, to work with the legislature, to bring reform and change to this state? My third promise is that I am going to work every day and every night from dawn to midnight to inspire everyone in Maine to believe as I do that our future can be bright and vibrant and beautiful. That we have competitive advantages, assets in this state that make us the best turnaround candidate in America. You know, when I am away from Maine, and I come home, <clears throat> if I can't get a flight into, into, into Portland, I fly into Boston, to London, and I get in a car. I rent a car and I drive home. As soon as I'm halfway over the bridge between Portland and Kittery, I'm home. Right? As soon as I come home from, I'm coming home from Canada, so I'm coming over the bridge in Callis, but I'm Callis and St. Stephen, I'm halfway over the bridge at home. I'm home, and I know Paul feels this way, he's home everywhere in the state of Maine. Why? Because we're one community. We're one small state. We have a million three hundred thousand people. There are 50 cities in China with more people than we have in the state of Maine. When I'm away from Maine and someone asks me where I'm from, I don't say I'm from Bangor or Cape Elizabeth or Hancock, I say I'm from Maine. 
and I'll bet most of you do too. We need to begin thinking about ourselves again as one community. We're all in the same leaking boat with a busted engine. And I don't care whether you live in Presque Isle, or Kittery, or Berwick, or Bangor, or any place in Maine, we all are depending on each other. And if we forget that, as we've now forgotten it for years, we're never going to pull ourselves out of this mess. I don't care where you live, I don't care what you do, I don't care who you are, I'm going to be your governor. And I'm going to make Maine work again. We're going to make Maine work again. We're going to make Maine work again so it can be the comeback state of the decade. No one has our assets. And we're going to show it.